All right, well, this is Aaron Squire, and uh, don't have any people in my channel just yet, so hopefully we'll get some people. I really want to make sure we get a, a decent amount of people to talk about some of the changes that are going on in the Hex community right now. Tonight we're going to be talking about the patch changes. That's going to uh, occupy a lot of our time tonight, and then we're going to move on to a land destruction aggro -y type of deck, something is that we haven't really seen very much. Uh, not too many people are playing anything like that. I mean, there's not a lot of land destructions uh, decks that are out there. So let's go ahead and jump right in here. So patch notes, these came out on, what day was this? On the 13th, uh, Dan went ahead and he sent these out. And the main thing that it talks about is some changes to the chain. For, uh, it's, it's basically uh, the chain is a lot like the stack for magic players. It's basically whenever it is that you cast a spell or whenever it is that you do anything, it basically goes on the stack. And in computer terms, uh, what happens is, is that something will go on the stack. And then if you cast something else on top of it, like your opponent casts something, they have a chance to respond. Then it goes on top of that. And so then it's the last thing to cast. And that will actually uh, <laughs> that will actually resolve first, and then the next thing cast will resolve. So that gives us the functionality of like a counter spell, where it is that you can cast a spell and then have it countered by this spell. And when this one resolves first, the counter spell will resolve first. This spell is countered, so it basically is removed from the stack at that point in time. Counters is also uh, another term it is that's used for whenever something fizzles as well, as a side note. So what they changed was that everything still goes on the stack except for triggers. So triggered abilities don't go on the stack. So things like this Fang of the Mountain God, this trigger would go on the stack. And during my turn, uh, it, w it would start the turn and Fang of the Mountain God would activate. And I would say, yes, go ahead and deal one damage to me. There's nothing I have to do to respond to that. And my opponent would have to say, yes, go ahead and deal one damage to yourself because there's no, nothing to respond to here. So that's an example of something where it makes sense, where it's like, well, there's not a lot that's going to happen in there because even if, like, for instance, I was going to heal myself, I would do that after, I, if I did that after the same effect, you know, I still heal myself up. Um, I guess if you needed to heal yourself at instant speed, you could do it at the end of your opponent's turn anyway. So, I mean, really, there's not a lot of leeway where you can say that having the stack there or not, in this specific example, is going to really affect things. Turreted Wall was another example, Scrivener, Righteous Paladin. One that they didn't mention was the uh, the wild... I always forget the name of him. The big... He's, he's big in the, the wild decks. Let me just pull up. I'm going to have to pull up one of my decks to remind me right now. Let's see here. Wild Root Dancer. So Wild Root Dancer can now buff things and your opponent can't respond anymore. So if you had a 2-2 in play and you're playing a Wild Root Dancer and they're, they're already in play, your opponent can't wait for you to drop a resource and then respond by killing the, uh, the creature. They have it have uh, which would give them a virtual 2 for 1. They have to basically kill the creature whenever they get a chance. Which is... Uh, you know, obviously with the two points of damage you would expect them to kill the the root dancer, but there may be situations where you would want to kill the creature. But so again, the 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 example isn't really a very good one, but it is uh something moving down the road that's gonna affect all the cards uh coming out and it's gonna affect the way it is that we play this game and it's gonna differentiate this game from magic if this game if this is something it is that the community takes to. However, right now I would say from what I'm seeing in comments like we went to the uh, Kickstarter page and this is so the first announcement happened on the 13th of November the next one was the Kickstarter which happened the Kickstarter annou announcement was two days later today November 15th you can see it talks about some of the same things and I would say that people haven't really played with the change very much right now and they're jumping to conclusions and they're saying that they don't like it already. I per personally don't especially like it, but I can live with it. It's nothing that I would f personally fly off the handle and say, hmm, 
you know, Cryptozoic, I gave you all this money, and this isn't the game that I paid for. No, I really wouldn't say that because I paid for an MMO card game. I didn't pay for a specific mechanic or other things. Anything they can do to entice more people to play is, uh, I think, a better way to go about things. Other things is that I want to mention while we're on the Kickstarter website, we've got a community manager that we'll be seeing pretty soon. Uh, I'm not sure exactly who this is, but I, I might have some idea. That is pretty exciting. So we're going to have a specific face for Hex that's going to be handling all the community stuff. Someone it is that's been pulled from the community that hopefully knows a, a lot of content already. And then uh, I just want to go ahead and highlight this Typhoon, uh, Haiyan, Yolanda. A lot of the victims out there uh, are undergoing a lot of uh, hard times right now. So while it is that we're here in the United States uh, in our comfortable houses, I mean, if you have... Uh, the ability to help out, and this is something that's tugging on your heartstrings, I would encourage you to go to this uh, Red Cross website. In fact, I will just go ahead and uh, I'll just read off the website. It's going to be http colon forward slash forward slash ushare dot redcross dot org dot ph, and uh, you can donate to the uh, victims there and help them out a lot. Uh, there are people on the ground that are helping them, and if you really feel like that's something it is that you need, uh, to do, then I, I would really, I would, I would definitely support that. So moving on to still talking about the same thing. Uh, so we've got, I just want to point out some of the threads that have popped up. So much hype on this community manager. <laughs> well, you, we never know who is going to be. Technify is joining me, my first uh, person in channel. Uh, Technify, we're talking about the changes to the to the chain. Uh, I, I definitely want to get some uh, back and forth, so go ahead and uh, talk to me. I'm looking at my chat channel right now, so uh, let me know some of the things that you specifically think about the chain changes or how you, uh, if you've experienced them especially. Um, Technifying what you what you would specifically go uh, go with there, but we're at about it looks like 62 posts, seven pages now on these discussion for the changes to the chain. Uh, we've got the the Reddit thread talking about the patch notes has about 29 comments about it, and I would say overall I would say maybe two or three out of four are uh, not for this change. They want to go back to the way things were. Another thing that, that's interesting to me about this is that this is a state-based, this is basically changes it into state-based effects. I'm not sure if I actually, yeah, I did pull this up. So state-based effects are things, I just want to read off a couple of these. They basically, it says, unlike triggers, state-based effects actions pay no attention to what is happening during the resolution of spellability. They simply happen. If, if a state-based effect uh, is met, it happens. It happens outside the stack. There's nothing you can do to stop it. You won't be able to respond to it at all. So here are some of the examples. A player has zero, zero life. He or she loses the game. If a player has attempted to draw from the library has no cards, then state-based effect says that they lose the game. If they have 10 or more poison counters, they lose the game. If a token is phased out in the zone other than the battlefield, it ceases to exist. There's nothing you can do to stop that. Uh, if a copy of a spell is in a zone other than the stack, it ceases to exist. Uh, uh, if a creature has toughness zero or less, uh, put it in its owner, owner, owner's graveyard. Regeneration can't replace its offend, effect. These are all examples of state-based effects, and we can go on and on and on about this, but I hope you got the idea of exactly what a state-based effect is, and that is the realm that we basically moved all of our triggered actions into currently with the, uh, the state of alpha. Uh, and Tectify is saying the change changes to the chain. It doesn't seem like it affects much at the moment. It's a bit different mindset and points of decisions to be made in Magic. Right. So you, I mean, it's just like what we were talking about. We have to make decisions kind of a little bit ahead of time. I don't think it has a huge, huge impact on the game uh, as much as people are uh, blowing it out of proportions. However, I still would prefer to have it the other way where I can do more things. Uh, it's also going to affect the way we change cards. Now, I want to point to another change that was made in Magic uh, quite a few years back, and that is damage on the stack. So for people that aren't aware of this, uh, damage would also go on the stack. So what this means is that you could attack with a creature, and then you say, I'm going to put damage on the stack, which means that the damage is ready to kill the creature. And then you could sacrifice your creature to another creature, and the damage would be dealt to the creature during combat. Um, and you would still get like a sacrifice effect. Like if you had something that said, sacrifice your creature and draw a card or gain a life or something, you would get that effect and still deal damage to the creature because you knew your creature was going to die anyways. And this was neat, and it was a combat trick that everyone, uh, the, the better players were using, and uh, 
um, you know, less well-known players were not, or, or less um, newer players really had a hard time using. And it just doesn't make a, make very much sense because you've got this creature that's dealing damage, and then all of a sudden that uh, damage, like they're dead, but they're still dealing it. It didn't make a whole lot of sense. But back in those days, that was kind of a big deal. In fact, what they did to fix this was this affected Mog Fanatic was a big one. Mog Fanatic was very similar to this Goblin Arsonist, which which uh, Mog Fanatic said you could, I think you could sacrifice it and deal one damage to target uh, creature or player. Um, and that was one of the biggest cards that was affected by this damage on the stack change. And so what they did was the next uh, set around, they came out with Goblin Arsonist, which does the same thing. It's just when it dies, it deals the one damage. This allowed uh, like the original card to trade for two twos, and this card does virtually the same thing. So, I mean, if changes like this were to come down the pike later on, obviously cards in the newer sets are going to take advantage of the newer rules and other cards will just you know be less usable so another thing I just want to point out is uh, some of the some of the people are talking about it dumbing down the game and other things and I just want to just read a little excerpt this is uh, um, some of you guys may know this guy this is Mark Rosewater who uh, is one of the main people that's basically uh, come up with the last couple of magic sets and he, he's done a lot of design and a lot of the, the work there. So he he has this article and he talks about, like, this maze uh, kind of represents the combat step in Magic. Uh, it's kind of obviously a tongue-in-cheek type of thing that's going on here. But this is how it can kind of feel for players that want to step up their game and move up into, like, a more professional uh, level of Magic. So I, I, it really gets... It puts, puts the, uh, the point... Uh, it really kind of... Uh, makes the point known to me that that's exactly what he's trying to get at there so he moves on to say uh, down here every time R&D or research and development does anything to remove some aspect of the game that we feel is unneeded is unneeded complication we get accused of dumbing down the game my response are you playing the same game I am Magic is one of the most complicated games in the history of games. The knowledge of the game is so vast that it is physically impossible for one person to even absorb all the information. And the game keeps changing, adding more and more information, meaning it's constantly getting more complicated. The real question isn't, are we dumbing the game down too fast? It's, are we dumbing, the dame <laughs> are we dumbing down the game fast enough? Now, I guess that's a little bit debatable, but... Uh, so... He says, if Magic started catering to the top 1%, guess what happens? 99% stop playing because they don't get it. We have to cater to the lowest common denominator because we want everyone who plays the game to be able to play it. Note that people are uh, below, uh, that there are people below our threshold. We, we just don't expect them to play uh, for great, a great length of, of time. We don't consider them our audience, but uh, the people we consider our audience, we plan to support, and that means making sure they know enough to drive the car. So, what he's really saying is the majority of people need to understand what's going on and not like it for us not to make a change. But if most people aren't understanding like damage on the stack, for instance, then that's that's something that needs to change. In this case, I think most people understand what's going on. They may not understand the stack or they may not know about it, but they they probably understand triggered abilities and eventually that should be somewhat intuitive uh, to make decisions there. However, speeding up the game is also important, especially online when you have like 27 uh, triggers on the stack. Um, you don't want to have to seed through all of them. So I had two solutions that I, I proposed uh, on the uh, thread, and the first one was uh, to have a seed all actions until the end of the game. This is something that's on the Magic uh, the Gathering uh, game, or Magic the Gathering Online client. You can basically push, I believe it's F4, and it seeds all your actions until the end of the turn. And so you get your actions at the end of the turn, or you get your you get your priorities on the next turn, but you don't have to worry about it. And that also helps with your uh, clock because every time your opponent passes priority, you pass it right back, and you never lose time on your clock, which is important because if your clock runs completely down, you lose everything. Uh, so 
It's old Dak. Hey, what's going on in the channel? We're talking about the chain tonight or the stack in magic terms. So moving forward, I, I, I kind of lost my train of thought. What was I thinking about? Uh, the the other thing, oh yeah, the two different things I proposed. So the other thing I proposed was one, have maybe a possibly uh, a checkbox where it is that people that are more advanced can uncheck it and get to see those triggers all the time, which is going to be something that we would suggest for people that want to up their game anyways. And while that would still allow people to have that uh, stack uh, ability and then other newer players won't have to worry about it as much. Another thing is that's interesting to me is like playing games like League of Legends or like uh, uh, what do you call it? What do you call it? Uh, Smite games that are very much like that. There are like newbie modes on those where it is that you check a box and it picks all your equipment for you and it automatically levels your champion. And although like that's not recommended at all for people that want to up their game, for new players that becomes more inviting. And so I don't see why it is that we couldn't have something like that in Hex, where it is like a newbie mode checkbox for a lot of things like passing priority or things like that where you just auto pass priority and, and especially when it is that you're handing new players a deck that are creating free accounts I don't see why it is that we couldn't have some sort of newbie mode and then have like under it a disclaimer that shows you all the things that it's removing from the game and for new players they'll probably be all for it so I think that those are all elegant answers to this question um, however I don't feel like it's going to completely destroy this game if we uh, have to deal with trigger, uh, triggers where it is that we can't respond to triggers anymore. So moving on forward, I don't see uh, too many other things. What do we got? I'm against it. It's playing two different two games, uh, two different games that way. Right? Yeah, it would be two rule sets. Right? It would be two rule sets. But I mean, the the object of this whole thing would be to. Uh, Technify would be to uh, make the game more inviting to new players. So, I mean, I guess that's the balance we have to strike. So, I mean, just because I come up with ideas doesn't mean they're all good. But, you know, it's better to come to the table with some sort of an idea than to come to the idea and just say, well, this sucks. And, uh, yeah, you shouldn't do it. Because that really doesn't uh, help uh, anybody. So I, I have seen some ideas put forth. Most of them are very similar to the ones I have on the website uh, or on the different forums that are out there on the Hex TCG forums and on the uh, Reddit forums. But um, yeah, I mean, it's not a great answer as far as that newbie checkbox, but because it would be two different rule sets, two different games at that point. But it is something that could be at least uh, an idea that, that it could be tossed around. Uh, so moving forward, let's see, we've got this aggro deck, it is, that uh, was uh, sent to me over my Twitter today. Oh, this isn't it. This is a different deck. Apparently my son needs water. Okay, here it is. So some interesting choices on this deck. Starting off, we've got Demolition, which uh, I think I really kind of want to play this card tonight. I think I want to try this out and see what it is that we can get to happen with it. However, I would like to play a turn two demolition. I kind of wanted to try to put together some sort of PVE deck. However, some of the cards on this website, when I click on them, I can't see, like it, it errors out and I can't see, like if I click on this Savage Raider, like it was erroring out. Yeah, it does this error out and I have a hard time seeing all the equipment and I felt like that was going to be a bit too much. So we're going to go through. His uh, curve is very interesting. He's running 21 resources. So he's running 14 1 drops and 12 12 uh, 2 drops, 11 uh, 3 drops, and uh, 2 4 drops, being the, I believe it's 2 Zoltog. Yeah, 2 Zoltog. So it's very much uh, a normal aggro deck like you're going to see. Suppressive Fire is probably the first cut I'm going to make here. Suppressive Fire, up to 2 target troops can't block this turn, and that's decent, but I mean, if I was going to play it at all, I might play it as like maybe a 1 of. If, if I was going to play it at all. Uh, it does target. It has to target troops, and uh, some of the metagame is starting to go towards troops that are untargetable now, as people are finding those more and more uh, advantageous. So we're definitely taking that down to at least one, and we can definitely get some more bodies in here that way. Arena Brawler is... It's all right, I guess. I mean, it's a 3-1. It is an orc. I mean, we're playing basically all orcs here. The uh, Poka, of course. 
Ember Spire Witch is. I think Ember Spire Witch is really really good in the meta right now because uh, it shuts down a lot of that life gain and you know so if your opponent if you're ahead and your opponent for some reason doesn't have murder or some sort of extinction for uh, Ember Spire Witch, then they're going to have a hard time gaining life. And even the, and usually the first life siphon isn't the one that kills you. It's usually the second or third one. So Ember Spire Witch helps us keep our board position uh, through the life siphon. However, uh, a lot of times that deck should be able to deal with Ember Spire Witch. It would be nice to have something that I could respond to and make my creature or my troop untargetable. That would be nice because that would help me save a lot of troops like uh, really really important ones like Ember Spire Witch while still basically trading my opponent one for one card so it's really not overly powerful uh, for burn three ruby lance I really like ruby lance over burn to the ground in this deck so we're going to actually remove burn to the ground and we're going to pump up the ruby lance because it's not a quick action I need to be able to do things in combat uh, another card that's very uh, absent from here seems to be Ragefire, and I think that's going to have to come in there. That's that's a pretty obvious choice here. So we'll go to the Alpha. Actually, we'll go over here, pull up the uh, colors. We're just dealing with Ruby and no color. Go down to the Ragefire. Uh, apparently I've got champions as well selected. I guess I could just type it in the top because I know what it's called. I don't have to do all this searching. I am kind of looking through the cards though at the same time. I mean it would be nice. There are some other cards that might be a little bit better for us. Like possibly uh, I don't know. Nah, Wrathseek is probably not that great. I haven't really seen too many people play him. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Pyromancer, but I guess he's I think he's trying to stick with the orc theme, or more of an orky orc orky orc deck. So let's stick with the Rage Fire. Another card that's definitely absent from this deck is the Gemmed Berserker. So that is one I think that needs to go in here for sure, as a nice hasty haste troop. Uh, it must I might have to look do something else here to search this out. It might be easier to just search it GM yeah, she's truly outrageous oh no hopefully I didn't cut my thing off oh did I uh, is it broadcasting no it's <laughs> yeah Sorry about that. I hit my F12 key, which is a bound key for my uh, stream, so I shut my stream off for a second there. So I am back. Oops, I don't want to go there. We got to... Hold on a second. And, okay, we're back. So... Yeah, there he is. Gem Berserker. So, luckily, I don't have my... Uh, <laughs> I don't have my... Uh, local recording uh, set up like that so let's see here so we've got the gem berserker I'm not sure if there's anything else that we really kind of want to throw in here we're not really using inspire very much I mean we could run with uh, we try with like Vite or whatever it's called. That's one that seems to be making a uh, more of a resurgence these days. Yeah, bottled Vite. Another one that I think would be interesting is maybe possibly an induction coil in some sort of a deck where it is that you're going to use your uh, champion power over and over again. That could be decent with some champion powers. So apparently, oh, you know what? I'm on cards. That's why it's not coming up. Not on decks where I can yeah this is a uh, hyena nipples uh, sent me this deck today for the deck doctoring thank you very much hyena I can't doctor any decks if people don't send them to me so right now we're at 64 cars we actually don't have to cut that many the gem berserker we're gonna throw in the gem oh, I can't even look at the gem but the gem that basically gives it haste that's that's gonna be the gem of choice here so we'll have a nice 3-2 haster there. We don't have to worry about anything else. 
We should probably put in the the other haster as well, though. The uh, I forget what his name is. Uh, he is he's a two-two haster, but you can pay you can pay another one, and he can haste himself, which is nice. I'm actually surprisingly not seeing a lot of uh, bombsmith being played. Another problem with playing orcs is, oh yeah, here he is, taskmaster. So yeah, we should probably play with this guy. Another problem with playing orcs is a lot of them have to attack, and so that can be really problematic if your opponent stabilizes in any way. It's Crash of Beast is going to be a huge problem for this deck. Okay, Daringer. Uh, yeah, we can. Um, yeah, anytime it is that anyone wants to send me a deck, you can send it to me on my Twitch channel, or you can send it to me on YouTube. Send me a link to uh, TCG browsers, one I use. But if you have it in, uh, I forget what the other one is. Anywhere, or if you just even just have text file of the deck, um, you can send that to me, and I will deck doctor you. I do one deck a week, so right now I'm doing this one from Hyena Nipples. But I would love to look at your deck next week, Daringer. So. And I, I do play it on the uh, I do play it in the client as long as it's got all I've got all the cards to play it. So Tormentor, what do we got? We're at 68 cards. We need to come down a little bit. So Demolition, I really would like to go into Wild to play Demolition. I kind of want to see it in action. It'd be nice to play it against some sort of control deck. I know uh, the other thing, the only only problem I have with Demolition is that it dumps resources but it doesn't dump shards so if my opponent has the shards then I mean they can still cast that extinction if they play another resource even if it's not in the proper shard or if they had something uh, like uh, what's it called the one where it's it makes it makes it makes more resources every turn uh, I always forget what that I always forget what the cards are called. But speaking of forgetting what cards are called and not not induction coil, you should spend time memorizing your cards, uh, or at least memorize the ones you're going to be playing with. And the reason why is so you can get surge mechanism. That's the card. So not just so you can spout off cards to people, but also so it is that you kind of like know like what the cards do. I mean, I'm not too much about memorizing titles, but memorizing what cards do. Usually when I'm writing out a deck list, um, it's <laughs> funny thing is, is I'm, I'm sitting on my lunch hour at work or maybe I'm going to, you know, going to the bathroom or something or whatever, you know, I, I we're, we're all busy people. I mean, some of you are still in school or doing other things. And, uh, so it's nice to have a pad of paper and if you have it memorized, you can, you can scribble it out or say you just built a deck the night before um, and you don't have it with you uh, which you probably aren't carrying around at work or school anyways but that way you can go back write out the deck that you just built the last night to uh, give you familiarization so that way also when you're playing the deck you know what's left in the deck what possibilities there are for uh, top decking and, and uh, you can think through what kind of things uh, you need to get or need to do or how how the matchup is looking it can really save you a lot of time so i think we're going to pull this arena brawler it really just not doing it for me uh three one vanilla creature for two i mean it's pretty good it's nice that we get to choose when he attacks but we're not giving him first strike or anything i don't i just he's just not enough for me so that kind of helps out there a little bit we might actually bump our resources up to at least 22 here as well I'm going to keep the suppressive fire because it was in the original build. I think that would be interesting to have. And, and especially because a lot of our stuff has to attack. Uh, it's definitely going to be good. But Veteran Gladiator is going to be usually more than more than enough. Uh, I think Ember Spire Witch, we could take those down maybe to like three or two. Um, it's not so much the clunkiness. It just doesn't fit with the, the orky theme to, you know, when we get to Zoltog uh, range. Savage Raiders, uh, staple of the deck, of course. Ruby Lance, it's pretty decent removal. So, I like having this nice suite of removal. We may go down maybe to two Ruby Lance. That might be okay. What else have we got here? We got 61 cards. I do feel like we need to go up a resource here. Our curve is is looking a little bit better. We could probably get rid of a one drop somewhere. Definitely not Tormentor. Tormentor is definitely one we want to keep around. 
uh, we may go down maybe to one or two Savage Raiders. I think I feel better with maybe two Savage Raiders because it's just early game, it's great, and then late game, it really, really drops off. It drops off on turn three, I would say. So let's see here. What do we got? 59 cards. Let's let me bump up our Ruby Shard to 22, and I feel like we're pretty well there so we'll see uh, how good this demolition really is in the format uh, a lot of things are hungry I mean right now we have no counter spell to deal with uh, one what John Tad calls the one of the best cards in the format which is life siphon I mean we really have no way to deal with that and that's the uh, card that deals X damage and gain X life uh, cost two blood threshold and X uh, and it's basically all gravy so if you tap uh, six resources, you get six life, and your opponent loses six. Which you know, when you go up into that nine point range, I'd say um, probably once it's uh, once your opponent has seven resources with life siphon, it's dangerous. It's dangerous because I mean that's with two of them, that's fourteen damage right to the noggin, and they're gaining fourteen back. Uh, obviously, if it's in the nine ten range, you're basically dead. But with the decks the way they're running these days, uh, they're also running uh, Inquisitor what his first name is but like it's uh so that's going to deal you usually like three three or f like six six ish damage because like you know you usually he plays it out and then it's gemmed and he deals three damage right away and then like you kill it and then he plays it again that's three more damage so you're usually at 14 already anyways so hopefully you'll be able to come in under that deck and then maybe de demolition some stuff uh so that way he can't cast his extinction demolition is hopefully going to stop extinction in this deck uh, other things that are going to be really problematic for this deck because we can't pump up the back ends of any of our guys is uh, the Heat Wave. Heat Wave, which is a lot like Pyroclasm, deals two damage to everything. That's going to be another huge problem. It would definitely be a side in if somebody was in Ruby and they had it on their sideboard. Uh, so I think we can go ahead and try this. So let's go ahead and pull up our client. we got plenty of time to play this. It's only eight. We're only 30 minutes into the cast. So let's see here, F11, we're going to pull this over here so I can look at it while I am pulling up my client. And I'm going to flip over to the Hex TCG client, and I'm going to turn that off because I don't have my comments on in the right spot. Turn that off, pull up the client, there we go, build a deck, and we will call this the Nipples deck after Hyena Nipples. Yes, it would be, it will, it, and it will be good. I'm gonna turn my sound back on because I turned it off. It, it it plays over even when I'm minimized out of it, so kind of have to do that. So I'll just go ahead and turn that back up. Sometimes I I don't know if sometimes that that goes or not. Do do, do resume. Even if you have, uh, Daringer, if you have that deck, you can even post it to me now and I will save it off and I will definitely look at it for next week as well. Uh, let's go ahead and do a new deck. We'll call this the Nipples deck. The Nipples. All right. Saved, yep. I'm definitely liking the new icons over here. Also, the deck list is, has been upgraded, so it looks a lot better, a lot nicer for us. I don't think we had any artifacts for this deck. Let me go ahead and fix this so I can see all the cards at once. So over here, yeah, now I don't have to scroll anymore. So we'll go and select our champion first. Poka this comes right up. She knows, she knows she's part of the, you know, she's gonna be part of this deck. Again, we're you know while I'm deck building, you guys are welcome to uh, you know give me comments or ask me things. Welcome to ask me about uh, some of the changes to the chain or give more uh, comments on that. I'm I'm still open to go back to that topic while I am building this deck. So, or some of your feelings on the the changes to the chain. So where is there's burn? We need four of those. We need, yep, there's that demolition. I do like the idea of playing a turn two demolition with uh, some sort of, uh, with the mana dork. I always forget his name. I think that he would be really good. Rage Fire, of course, is obligatory at this point. Ruby Aura is actually not that bad. I mean, um, a lot of these auras are quick actions, which is nice. So they're very much on par with, like, some sort of uh, pump spell. 
that stays. So it's a nice combat trick. It's really nice that they did this with all these action, uh, with all these auras, uh, as, as you know, as they enchant creatures. And normally you would, you're gonna have to cast those at like some sort of basic action or sorcery speed, which means you have to do it in your first or second main phase, and that gives your opponent a chance to react to it. It's much much better to be able to do this during combat, and that kind of ups the value to these. And so it's a lot easier to do one of or two of those in a deck. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't uh, find room for that right now. Definitely uh, room for some tweaking in a deck like this, though. Sounds like my kids are having a good time downstairs, and that's where we want them to be. We don't want them to be uh, screaming and crying. That's definitely not the place we want to be at. So, which we said, what, three of these? I like the first strike. I definitely like the way it is that Ember Spire Witch combos with... Uh, whatever her name is, with Pyromancer, because you have your Pyromancer, and then you have your Witch, and now you've got a 3-2 uh, Swift Strike Witch, which seems pretty good to me. What else did we have in here? Oh, yeah, we, I get to gem a uh, Berserker, which seems pretty good. Where is gem Berserker? I'll just type it in here. Oh, there he is. He's right here, actually. Yeah, gem craze berserker. So you actually have to put the cards in your deck before you gem them, and then you have to gem them by clicking on the gem, and then finding the gem. So we want we want the speed gem in here, most def. Speed, speed, speed. I guess it's you could also try it with. You definitely don't want the temporary resources when they deal damage. You could also try the deals damage to target troop. That one is working as well. That could be interesting. I mean, if you felt like you were in an aggro, some sort of aggro matchup, um, like that was something that was more of the meta game was a lot more aggro. But I think speed's going to do you a lot better right now because it's basically a lot of uh, we see a lot of sweeping going on with um, with uh, oh, I forgot what it's called now with the uh, sweep card um, that basically kills everything. Alright, so uh, what am I missing? I'm missing something. Is there a one of here? I'm missing it. I'm missing something. So I've got room for one more before I put gem, before I put uh, shards in here. Got three of those. There's something else that's uneven. Oh, that's what it is. I had suppressive fire in here, so we're going to get to see suppressive fire in action. If you have the uh, Hex Client, if you're in the Alpha, you're welcome to uh, join me uh, and challenge me. Let's go ahead and get it suppress. So one of those, and we will save it off. Okay, so it should be... It's going to give me a message. It has a pop-up now, which is nice. Because before, it would just simply reload all your cards, and that's how you knew it was saved. So I think this should be okay. So let's go ahead and uh, try it out. Soldax in channel, yeah. Weber's up, Weber's in as well. So I'll just say challenges. Okay, somebody's Doug is challenging me, so we will play the the nipples, the nipples deck. Apparently my sound didn't get turned on, so I'll have to fix that after this. I do that out of habit. I move my thing up there. So this is definitely keepable. We got the we we're one resource away from um, having exactly what we need. So we'll go ahead and keep this. And he is running the some sort of the uh, it looks like the control deck that we actually want to spot off against and use our land destruction against. So this should be interesting if we draw any land destruction. We'll see if we can keep them off extinction. Extinction! That's the card. Okay, so we got that. No real plays here, so we'll go ahead and pass the turn over to Doug. Doug, Doug. Doug. What a great show. da 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 Hmm, well that would have been nice a turn earlier, so let's see. I 
think I really don't want to play the witch out here. I'd rather him kill Tormentor, actually. So we're going to play our resource, and we'll play our Tormentor out. Uh, the witch, I feel like, is a really big player in this matchup. Okay, awesome, Daringer. I will definitely hook you up next week, I promise. You are in the queue, and you are number one in the queue. So I, I, I guess that should make you feel good. It's going to be very interesting to see if uh, anything comes up or any, if anything's going to change with the the whole like uh, chain uh, the the, the uh, triggered abilities. You've been having trouble with the mana curve. Okay, okay. Well, we can definitely. I mean, I I, I run through it rather quickly. So uh, when I'm so if you want, we can go back to this deck and we can look at the mana curve and we can talk about it and uh, I can tell you kind of like what I do. So. Let's go ahead and do this. Um, so we're obviously going to. So this is where again the uh, Ember Spire Witch is uh, really really good because we use the Polka ability. He's got no uh, response to us because he's got zero. Henkey, right. are we stalled? Stalled. Okay, never mind. Never know. I should probably say hello. Hello! Um, and we'll go to attack step. Boom. Smash in there. Second main phase, we'll play our veteran gladiator. I really feel like I might actually even just hold on to this Ember Spire, which it depends. I mean, I kind of have to dump out my hand to get this Tormentor online, but he basically is within his range for Extinction here, so... Hmm. I think, I, I mean, I smell an Extinction coming on. And it does not smell good. Okay. So I think the next play is actually Rage Fire to the face here. To his face, that is. I still have plenty of time. Oh, there's an Extinction. Okay, and that's great. So now I feel a lot better about playing some other stuff. So now I can play my Witch to put more pressure on him, and I'll probably just Rage Fire to the face. Just keep pushing damage. If I can destroy one of his resources, I think that that would put us in good shape as well here. We've got five cards in hand. We've got... Hmm. So I'm actually going to Tormentor Rage Fire here, and I'll just hold. I, I really feel like I need to hold this uh, Ember Spire Witch, so we'll go ahead and play the Tormentor. And we'll just Rage Fire the face here. Just keep pushing damage through. Suppressive Fire is kind of clunky versus his deck. Uh, if he plays a Protectorate Defender, it'll help me push damage through that Protectorate Defender, but other than that, I might end up burning it just to buff my Tormentor, which is kind of sad. So I hope he plays a Defender here. That would be nice. I would like him to... Well, he. I, I'm trying to remember if he needs two resources. This is another reason why you memorize the cards, or at least memorize what's on the cards. Uh, Protector Defender is a 2-4, and he's diamond... I, I can't remember if he's two diamond threshold or not, but this way I know kind of like what he could do or what he couldn't do. So do I drop an Escalation card as soon as possible to get the effect back into the deck or hold on to it in order to use them selective, selectively? Uh that question from Daringer. Um, so it depends. Like typically a lot of times you're going to drop them immediately. Um, in this case I kind of held off on it. Uh, I know that he has very very few troops in this deck. I, I know that he's running the Cockroach would, so I was kind of saving it for that. Uh, or the Cockroach being the Inquisitor. So it takes care of Inquisitor which is nice. So same thing we're going to play that. We'll go to our attack step and swing in, and then we'll play a Veteran Gladiator. Um, like Crash of Beast, for instance, I play that as soon as I can, a lot of times. Or, um, I mean, it's circumstantial in some cases, depending on how I feel, but 
a lot of times, yeah, I want to get that back in the deck. So it really depends on the card. I would say with the mill deck, you're probably... I haven't actually uh, built the mill deck or played the mill deck. I also stopped... I, if you notice, I didn't play my Ember Spire Witch because I'm waiting for that second sweep now. Or some... You know, he probably has some murders at some point in time. He's at five resources. A life siphon here would put him back to uh, 12. Kind of basically resetting his clock. He's doing a lot of digging with Pact of Pain here. He's putting himself down to five. So if I were to dump out my hand here, and he doesn't have a kill card in hand, that seems really good. Okay, there's the extinction. So he's digging for extinction, extinction again. So now I can play Ember Spire, which I don't have. Uh, I don't know what I was just going to say, but... That's two extinctions out of the way, so he ha he could easily have murder to deal with this Ember Spire Witch. So it's really looking uh, like I need to stabilize here. Zoltog actually is going to be the play here, so we will play Zoltog by himself and uh, see if he has to extinction or he'll murder. He'll probably murder Zoltog. Zoltog is really uh, another one he has to kind of like, uh, he really has to deal with. So probably murder here for Zoltog. He's got seven cards in hand. That's quite a lot. He's got six resources. If he gets to that seventh resource, I feel like I'm in trouble. Yep, there's that seventh resource. There's that Protectorate Defender we were talking about. And the Suppressive Fire is going to help me push through him quite a bit. So that would be nice. Of course, uh, it would have been nice to also have been able to use Veteran Gladiator. So he's got three resources left. He can still murder my guy. But uh, we're going to go ahead and just... Let's see here. Basic action. So I have to do this in my uh, first main phase, so that's unfortunate. But that's, that's the way it is. Up to two target troops. Uh, let's hit accept. Should work just fine. And we're going to go ahead and activate our uh, charge power, get our blaze elemental going. And I play my Ember Spire Witch in the second main phase. It doesn't really affect the combat. I feel like him having another extinction here would be uh, pretty amazing. That gives me, puts him right at two, I put this Ember Spire Witch, and now he, he either has to murder lots of guys or sweep or something. He did, obviously didn't have the murder, otherwise he would have murdered Zoltog there. So that way I didn't get this uh, this uh, Savage Raider, which is really, really lucky for me. Very, very lucky. Another card I can think of as far as Escalation is concerned, uh, obviously depending on board state, but a lot of times the life gain one, you are going to use that one as soon as possible. So he's returning the Protectorate Defender to his hand, which tells me he has another sweep in hand, which is very lucky for him because he's a 2. However, he's within burn 2 range, so I, all I have to do is burn him out for 2 here. So if I top deck some sort of uh, burn spell, I should be able to uh, finish. So most likely he has another extinction here. Yep, there it is. It's really unfortunate we didn't draw any of our uh, uh, any of our basically like our stone rains, our resource denial in this in this uh, matchup because he should be able to uh, do something here. Oh, I guess he can play his protectorate defender and gain some life back again. So really bad position for me right now. He stabilized the board state pretty well. He's got lots of cards in hand. Pack of pain is drawing him lots of cards. Probably on the sideboard. I don't think there's anything in Ruby that destroys constants like this Pack of pain, which is he pays two health to draw cards. Uh, however, if there was, that would be possible side in for this matchup. So that way, you know, you can at least run him out of cards. So I have to play this Ruby shard here, which is unfortunate um, because I need to get that charge power online again. I'd rather hang on to it. Uh, to bluff my opponent, but with the fact that her charge power is only three, I kind of have to play it now. 
So it basically tells him I have nothing in hand, and now I can start swinging away with that protector defender. However, most of my stuff has haste, so I don't think that it would be very wise for him to do so. So we should see a life siphon probably on this turn, I would think. Oh, he is going to swing in. He's going to be a little bit gutsy, but he probably has life siphon, which puts him in a pretty good spot. So this this should be good game here, actually. Yeah, it's really unfortunate we didn't see our resource denial. Again, this is uh, one of the decks that uh, we're playing against is one of the possibly the best decks in the format right now due to the fact that we have no counter magic. So if he has another life siphon in his hand, I think it'll be good game next turn, obviously, because we have he has nine resources and plays quite a lot. Yeah, so we'll just call this game. I'll, I won't deny him, though, because I know he has another life siphon in hand. And with that many cards, I would, I would expect it. Three, uh, very lucky to draw three extinctions out of, you know, he still has 41 cards left in it, 40 cards now left in the deck. Three extinctions in a row is, is pretty lucky. It, that's That's got to be some pretty good odds there. But that's not going to happen. So there's that life siphon we were talking about, and good games. So I don't feel like that matchup is horrible, really, for this deck. Um, obviously, I would have made some different choices for the deck, but I kind of want to stay somewhat true. It's very difficult when I'm deck doctoring. Um, I'm, I mean, sometimes uh, people don't like some of the choices that I make, so that does happen from time to time. So let's go ahead and we'll get one more game in here and then we will call it a night. Wraith, Great Shadows, Baseball Flanders, <laughs> The Lost Temple, Shambles, Hydra, Hydra! seeing him in here. Like, I don't see him as the uh, players, but he's talking to me. I can't see him either. <laughs> huh. Oh, gosh. So, I'm going to click over here. Now I can challenge him. The nipples. So we'll see if we can get a win here on the uh, with the, the nipples deck. I'd like to see some resource destruction. That's what I kind of want to see. Uh, it's very very unfortunate we didn't draw it there. But to really, I mean, honestly, for resource destruction to be viable there needs to be you need to be able to run 12 resource destruction cards in your deck and there aren't that many in the format you only have one which means you have four in the deck all right well this is a lot better already because we got our turn one play with savage raider so we're going to keep this uh, hard uh, horde hard to say I guess I'm getting to the point now where like I can't keep track of everyone because I don't remember specifically Hydra. Apparently he knows me. He might be somebody else with two accounts though that, that knows me on a different account. So he is playing... Um, oh, okay. So he's playing the... The wild sapphire tempo deck, which plays, which draws lots of cards and plays lots of dudes. My savage raider is definitely uh, worth less than his howling brave, so attacking him with a savage raider is a good play here. 
Actually, we're going to rage fire his guy anyways. Yeah, I'm not even going to worry about it. We'll just rage fire. Yeah, we'll just rage fire to stifle here. Stifle his... Uh, it's always a good time, good thing to do if you can stifle somebody's resource uh, generation. Or attack step. I think he automatically attacks. We, we don't have a choice. Yeah, he does. So on that side of things, I mean, during, versus the ramp deck, obviously this deck's going to fall off if they play uh, something really big like Crash of Beast or something, but you can s kill their mana dorks and you can uh, destroy resources with it, so that's kind of neat. Kind of a good thing. I mean, how competitive it is. Nah. I always like to... Typically, it's good to play some sort of Ruby Wild uh, variant where it is that you have dorks so you can turn to, um, you know, dump somebody to resource. I feel like that's the, the better thing to be able to do in that case. I, can't, I still can't believe that guy had three sweeps. Of course, if he didn't, he would have had a murder or something. Or he might have had murder and he was just waiting. He just felt like he was... You know, not even worth his time to murder my stuff. I guess I could have held on to that witch for one more turn, but probably it wouldn't have done any good, realistically, because Defender defends it. <laughs> so he's got the uh, he's got three threshold, two resources, because we killed his uh, his dork. When we say when I say mana dorks, it basically re represents anything that I can drop for a one drop that I that produces me resources. Probably one of the more recent ones in Magic uh, terms was the uh, what's his name um, Shaman something or other Deathrite Shaman Deathrite Shaman is ridiculous. That card is ridiculous. It's a one two, basically a man dork that does like three different things for one, and it's and it's not even one out of one color. It's one out of either you you could play black or you could play green for it. I mean it's just so good. So I'm really excited for the future of Hex when it is that we start getting complex cards like that. I mean, right now it's nice to have these, you know, simplicity. Hey, okay, Soldak, I see that you're in the the channel real quick. I haven't looked at the thread, honestly. Send him a deck. Okay, yeah, that's what I figured. Okay, so I'm sending you a full deck list and sideboard. That, that was my question. Probably could have waited to play these during my second main phase. That actually was two play mistakes. I haven't obviously built any um, uh, what do you call them uh, interfaces or stuff like that for my stream or for my show yet. However, I, I am looking into that and working on my skills there. I gotta b have skills to pay the bills in that case, you know, to make sure it is that I can put something up that's not going to be uh, trashy. Alright. Yeah, tomorrow I have my uh, David and Goliath match uh, I forget who I'm playing against. Uh, he's I always lose to him though. <laughs> but um, that that should be a really good thing to watch. That's going to be a five o'clock uh, Central Time, I believe. So not exactly sure what what I'm going to play. A lot of times I'm playing the uh, the mono uh, wild ramp. Endormi, that's right, Endormi. Yeah, I'm playing against Endormi, a really really good player. Uh, I believe he scored the highest points in the round, <laughs> and I'm at the I, I barely scraped in uh, to the uh, top four to play against him, so we'll see what happens. Uh, I mean, it's going to be one of those, if I do beat him, it's going to be one of those moments where it's like, you know, maybe 99 times out of 100 he beats me, but I beat him at one time, and all that has to happen is it'll be that one time will be there tomorrow. So, I mean, that's... <laughs> But yeah, he's he's a really good player, and you know, just like anything else, when you're playing this game, uh, or any card game for that matter, some nights are your night, and some nights are not. There are things that are within your control, like the plays that you make, and there are things that are out of your control, like getting flooded or uh, getting hosed on your resources. So those are the things that are not in your in your uh, control. Also, uh, when someone draws three extinctions in a row, you know, things that aren't in my control for 200, Alex. Good night, Soldak. Have a good one. So, this will be the last game of the night. would like to get a win in here. Actually, you know what? I would count this as a win if all I get to do is uh, hit him with some sort of stone ring. So, Ragefire is definitely going to go to that uh, dancer. Actually, um, 
I'd say that Wild has a real hard time with, after playing Mono Wild, Wild can have a really hard time with Mono Ruby, uh, except for if they're playing the Scout, the uh, Nebulum Scout, which uh, is very effeminate. We're not sure if it's a man or a woman, uh, but uh, actually, you know, we, we won't even waste the Rage Fire. We don't have to. We can actually just Ruby Lance his uh, Root Dancer. There's the demolition we want to see. Hmm. So. He's not going to block most of these guys. I think I had Demolition is actually a decent play here to stifle him. So it just puts me down on damage, really. He's not going to block either one of these guys. So let's go ahead and Demolition him here. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and Demolition. And that saves me. I still have stuff I can do here. So then you can see his resources went down to two. Killing his coyote, yeah, so yeah. Um, oh, uh, so her hand has too much costly stuff. It's kind of exciting. I kind of want to know, you know, that that, um, Demolition. I, I want to call it Stone Range. Resources away, yeah. So, oh, two resources. Yeah, so he has a four drop in his hand. He can't. He can't play it. He has none. He has none in hand. So he could draw into one, but I mean, that's just. I'm just too going to be too fast. And I've also got a four point rage fire and a ruby lance for three. Um, if I draw into another uh, card, that's that's basically eight points of damage there. So, gambled and lost. <laughs> so. Too bad. Oh, hey, Abrexis. Yeah, we're playing um, cards. Yeah, yeah, I love playing uh, World of Tanks. Um, I haven't been playing as very much. You know, I have to take care of the kids. But uh, usually on those double weekends, that's probably when you'll see me out these days. Hello, my adoring fans. Yeah. So. All right. That seems pretty good. So. So, yeah, I mean, uh, so tonight, just to talk about some of the things that we went over tonight, we talked about some of the patch changes. Uh, we went over this Land Destruction aggro deck. Again, um, Land Destruction, probably not the greatest. Maybe a side-in or something you could use. Uh, I just want you guys to uh, be encouraged to go out, and if you have access to the Hex Client, try the new changes. See what you think about what's going on with the, uh, the change to the chain or to the uh, stack where it is that we have... Uh, triggers that are no longer going on the stack and how it is you have to respond to them. Give meaningful feedback. Don't go to Cryptozoic and be like, this isn't what I paid for. I'm pissed off. I don't have any solutions. Give them reasons why you don't like it. Tell You don't have to be like that strong about it. You just tell them, I don't like this. That's all they really need to hear. And they're tallying up the votes, as it were. And if enough people don't like it, I would say probably if it's 80 or 90 percent of the community really don't like it, it's probably not going to happen. Um, that's all that really needs to happen, and and really just don't be afraid of change. You know, in this world there are changes that are going to happen. People got to move different places, change jobs, do other things. In general, uh, change doesn't have to be a bad thing. So try out the change, see what see what you guys like about it, see what you don't like about it. Uh, talk about those stuff on the forums. Make sure you're uh, giving good feedback. Other than that. Um, 
yeah, check out all the, the great games that are going to be going on tomorrow. we got four rounds tomorrow, and I think we will have another three rounds on Sunday to decide the champion for this very, very first Hex TCG tournament. I'll be running my uh, game, uh, David and Goliath versus Endoramy, at 5 o'clock p.m. tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, this is Aaron Squire saying God bless you and your families, and try not to rage too much out there.